Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. This post is from the subreddit Relationship Advice and it's by user throwaray dad wedding 400. My dad, 55 male, won't walk me down the aisle, 30 female, and I want to know if I should uninvite him from the wedding. I, 30 female, am getting married to my best friend, 35 male, in about a month. I did not grow up knowing my dad, 55 male, very well, as he and my mom divorced when I was an infant. He remarried and had several kids with his new wife, who hates my very existence. There were a lot of hurtful things done when I was growing up, like not being allowed in her house when I visited, which led me to be estranged from my father. He never really made much of an effort, but after I was 18, I completely cut him off for my mental health and stopped answering a few calls he attempted. He tried to get into contact every once in a while over the years, but I honestly just ignored him. I was hurt and angry. About a year ago, I got back into contact with some extended family on his side and have been forging a good bond with all of them. I invited them all to our wedding and they have been amazing. Eventually, I started speaking with my dad as well back around Christmas and it was tense at first, but I decided to just give him a chance. We have slowly been getting a semblance of a relationship back and I saw him in person with my fiancé a couple of months ago. His wife is not pleased with this at all. And apparently, their kids might have siblings who are all adults are also upset about it. I think there were threats of divorce, but my dad still decided to go to my wedding. After a ton of thought, I asked my dad if he wanted to walk me down the aisle as I had been hopeful for a better relationship, but he turned me down. I wouldn't be as upset if he gave a generic excuse, but he told me his wife and other daughter requested he not walk me down the aisle as that is reserved for his other daughter and not me. I am super hurt and not even sure what to reply to that. He offered to stand at the front and give me away instead, but that wasn't what I wanted. My fiancé thinks we should uninvite him and move on, but I'm not sure if that is the best course of action. He is coming from out of state with the rest of his family, so he already bought a plane ticket and hotel room. Part of me thinks to just politely turn him down and have him as a regular guest and then just stop talking to him again after the wedding. My mom isn't coming to my wedding because she lives really far away, so I don't really have any other immediate family coming. I'm not sure what the best course of action is and the wedding is getting super close, so I have to make a decision soon. Well, OP, I have to say, I'm completely on board with what your fiancé is saying. I think he's absolutely right. What the F does this man mean that that is reserved for his other daughter? What happens in the case that some man out there in the world has two daughters or more? Does he only get to choose one to walk down the aisle and the other he just needs to stand in front and give them away? Absolutely not. That's not how it works. Unfortunately, OP, your bio dad or your sperm donor, let's call him, because this is not a father, is a spine cockroach and that is an insult to cockroaches. OP, I don't think you should settle for a half-assed dad because that's just not good for you. I understand you wanting to have this type of relationship but it's not gonna be a good one because this man again is not a father and don't feel guilty because he already spent some money on a plane ticket and a hotel room. He skipped out on your life so just tell him you thought things over and it's best he not come. That's it. End of communication. And then you can choose, do you really need somebody to walk you down the aisle? If you do, what about your future father-in-law? What kind of a relationship do you have with him? And what do you guys think about OP's situation? What would you do if you were in her shoes? Let me know in the comment section and now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Admirable Scale 5075 says, I'm so very sorry you grew up without a father and I'm equally sorry you put yourself in such a vulnerable state and he shot you down. Really, what you decided to do about rescinding the invitation is entirely your decision. Is there a male figure on his side of the family who is coming to the wedding and could take his place? Perhaps his brother or father? Or maybe a male figure in your fiancé's side of the family? Whatever the outcome, I wish a beautiful day for you. You are creating a whole new family for yourself by joining your fiancé's family. All the best of luck to you. 
Shebelev says, You say that you have a relationship with other members of his side of the family. Tell them ahead of time that he is doing this. Not in a, oh, poor me way, but just in a, just wanted you to know that I'm not rejecting this side of the family. Dad's wife thinks that he can only walk one daughter down the aisle ever, and it has to be her daughter, not me. Then just invite him as a guest since you want to have a birth parent attend. I guarantee that someone in your family is going to make things very awkward for him or them, and that's okay. And Jen5872 says, Dad, either grow up here and remind your wife and kids that I am still your daughter whether they like it or not, or don't come to the wedding. You can't sit on the fence anymore. You either be my dad or bow out altogether. This in between, I can be your dad as long as my other family doesn't get too upset, no longer cuts it. It's too painful for me. Do you have a grandfather or uncle who might want to walk you down the aisle? Opie's edit. Wow, this post has blown up. Thank you all so much for the advice and comforting words. To answer some common questions I am seeing. No, his wife and my half-siblings are not attending the wedding. I invited them, but they won't even meet me, let alone come to the wedding. He has two sons and a daughter with this new wife, all in their 20s. I meant my aunt, uncle, and cousins are coming. My mom cannot fly as she has panic attacks, and driving 3,000 miles would take her 5 days. She also is actually a worse parent than my dad in a lot of ways, believe it or not. I gave up any hope with her a long time ago. Seems like I need to give up hope on my dad as well. I made my peace with her not coming. Yes, it's crappy, but not unexpected. It was partially a logistics thing as I mentioned and her not caring. On the bright side, my aunt and her family are amazing people, so they will be great at the wedding regardless. I am not sure if my dad cheated on my mom with my stepmom. My mom, through all of her faults, never actually said a bad word about him. He did marry my stepmom by the time I was two years old though, so there wasn't much time in between marriages. They are also very Christian in the worst way, as in they don't really follow what they claim to believe. Oh, OP, don't be confused. Those are not Christians. Those are hypocristians. Very different people. I have no male relatives to walk me down the aisle. I also never wanted him to give me away as I think that is dumb. I just wanted my dad to act like my dad for one moment. My fiancé and I decided to walk down the aisle together, as one of you suggested, so that part is settled. Also, thinking about the wedding pictures, having him in a ton of them will just make me sad when I look back, so I need to think about that. I'll update everyone once I decide what to do and if there is any response. Alright, well, I think the community gave OP a lot to think about because some of the suggestions have already been taken. OP and her future husband are going to walk together down the aisle and OP needs to think about her dad coming because looking at the pictures with him in it is not a nice thing. So it's time for us to move on to the update, but before that, if you're enjoying this video so far, please don't forget to leave a like and a comment because that always helps engagement and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Now let's move on with that update. Hello everyone, I just wanted to start by saying thank you so much for your kind words and advice to my original post. It made me feel so much better. We had an amazing wedding and honeymoon, everything went really well. My husband wants to thank everyone who said some form of listen to your fiance. <laughs> also, just to clear it up, he is, unfortunately, definitely my bio dad. I did a DNA test for fun and matched with his aunt, which is how I got back into contact with any of my family in the first place. I also look just like my grandma, his mom. Now I'll start the update with what happened right after my last post. I did not invite my dad to my wedding, and the whole interaction was too hurtful to let go of. Before telling him I was uninviting him, I spoke with my aunt, his sister, Sandy, 50s female, who was furious at her brother for what he said to me. She has been such a great support for my husband and me, which has been amazing, honestly. After I sent my dad an email detailing how hurtful he had been and that he was uninvited, Sandy called him and yelled at him for being an ass. He replied to my email with a bunch of nonsense deflection about how he has to make sure both sides are happy, but apparently told Sandy, not me, that he was sorry and that it was a miscommunication. 
He claims to Sandy that he was only trying to negotiate with me and that he would have walked me down the aisle if that was what I really wanted. I highly doubt that. My mother-in-law, who is extremely conservative and religious, actually said my dad needed to grow some balls, which shocked everyone, literally. <laughs> I replied to him that I stood firm in my decision to uninvite him and to not contact me again until after the wedding, but that if he did contact me at all, it better be with the understanding that he needs to be present in my life the same way he is for his other kids, otherwise he should not reach out again. Around this time, right before the wedding, I called my mom and asked her about what really happened with her and my dad when I was a baby, because she never talked about it with me growing up. Unlike my dad and stepmom, my mom never once said anything bad about my dad to me. She was always neutral or positive about him, which I have since thanked her for as it let me come to my own conclusions about what a deadbeat he is. My mom and I had a good cry about everything and she let me know how abusive and awful my dad was to her when I was a baby after they split up. I also found out that he married his new wife when I was less than a year old, which is insane considering my parents were still 100% together the day I was born. Sandy swears up and down that she introduced my dad and stepmom to each other after my parents split, as they, stepmom and Sandy, were classmates in college. I don't really care either way at this point, it is just interesting to see how no one has a clear idea of what happened. My thought is that they were cheating and then used Sandy to introduce them to cover up their behavior. Keep in mind they are all very Christian, even though they clearly don't follow any of their religious teachings. I didn't hear anything from my dad during the wedding and Sandy and her family still came. We all had a blast and everyone was so happy for us. The pictures turned out great and there isn't anyone in them that I wish I could photoshop, so I definitely knew not inviting my dad ended up being the best decision we could make. I talked to Sandy about my dad over the holidays and she said that he and his wife and kids were refusing to go to any family dinners or parties because they were upset that everyone else was talking to me. I have been in regular contact with Sandy, my uncle Jerry and all of their kids, which makes my stepmom feel betrayed. Yeah, she can go suck a lemon. Sandy is pissed with her because they used to be friends but never understood what her issue was with me. I found out my stepmom treated me like crap the second she had her first kid when I was still a toddler, which probably doesn't surprise anyone. I didn't hear from my dad all through December, but finally, in late January, I got a random email from him. He sent me a long email blaming me for him not being in my life, telling me his wife and kids are more important, but that we need to still be in each other's lives. It was the most BS email he had sent me so far, and he completely disregarded my wishes back in October when I told him not to contact me unless he was going to treat me like his actual kid. I ended up not responding and just blocking his email. I also told Sandy not to share any of the pictures or videos from the wedding with him and not to talk about me with him. I think this will be the end of the relationship with him since he clearly is incapable of being a parent to me. I feel a lot more at peace with everything that happened and I am completely okay with how it all turned out. One commenter on my original post said something along the lines of not knowing if my dad would have been a bad parent since he wasn't around and that really has stuck with me. Thinking about it now, he probably would have been even worse had he actually been in my life. Unfortunately, both my parents are emotionally stunted but I made good use of the life that I was handed to me and will hopefully break the cycle with my own kids one day. I didn't mention in my last post that my husband and I are going to be moving to the same state as my family in the next year. I was worried at first about being closer to my dad, but honestly, he and his bitter wife and kids can do whatever they want. I'm just going to live my life how I want to. We were planning on moving to this state before I ever got back in contact with my family, so we will continue to do what is best for us. Anyways, thank you again kind redditors, you really helped me not feel sad or upset for my wedding day. Alright OP, well I think it's a positive update all around. You didn't have to deal with your crappy dad at your wedding, you're not gonna have to photoshop anybody out of the pictures, 
You learned a little bit more about the truth, and you really don't care what these people think anymore. And best of all, you've reconnected with a whole side of the family that you hadn't been in contact before, and they are awesome people that love and support you. And it also comes with the big side benefit that your bitter stepmom, your idiotic dad, and their kids are shunned by the family because they hate you so much. So congratulations on your wedding OP and here's wishing you and your husband the best in the future. Take care and thank you for sharing. And now let's finish this video with a mood booster post. This post is from the subreddit Pro Revenge and it's by user Crazy Mastiff. Today I effed up by being an a-hole on the internet and causing a stranger to get divorced. I'm really not a mean person and I genuinely felt terrible for destroying a marriage. I didn't mean for the revenge to go to this level by any means. I don't even know if I meant for revenge at all. But here we are. I, 42 female, effed up big time. Two weeks ago, on a random Thursday morning at about 1am, someone started shooting off fireworks in my neighborhood. I've been having bouts of insomnia and was finally able to get to sleep. I had to wake up at 4am for a meeting two hours away that I had to be at at 8am. I was pissed and so were my dogs. I love fireworks, but I think there's a time and a place. Thursday morning at 1am is not it. I posted on the neighborhood Facebook group a few hours later during a coffee break about people who set off fireworks at 1am midweek. After I made the long drive home, I checked my Facebook. Some guy comments that I can't sleep because I'm a fat pig. Now, I'm chubby but not sloppy fat. Plus, I just lost the equivalent of a fully grown male wombat or 54 North American grey squirrels, so I feel effing awesome about myself. This is where I may have really effed up. I responded to the guy, who was maybe mid to late 30s, very early 40s, about the same age group as me. I write in a comment beneath his. Listen, guy's name, I'm sorry I had to end things, but I just didn't have the same feelings. What you're saying now is just hurtful and mean. Please stop sending me messages and commenting on my Facebook posts. It is just a pathetic way to contact me. I told you a dozen times already that we are done. It's over. The following day, I had to get to the airport for an out-of-country vacation that had me getting up early and leaving early as hell. So, I don't check my Facebook during all the craziness, also because I'm only on it sparingly. I don't live on my phone and when I am, I'm usually on Reddit or TikTok versus Facebook. I could also not check my Facebook even if I wanted to. I was on a cruise, not paying $25 a day for internet, and the country we visited didn't really have the greatest access to Wi-Fi. Besides, I was having a blast leaving the chaos of the world behind. I signed on Monday night and F. Apparently, people took this seriously and told his wife. She was freaking out on me, pleading for information, sending me messages. She and his friends were DMing me. He was DMing me. It was bad. The last message was the guy saying, I may total see you next Tuesday because I refused to tell the truth and I just destroyed his life. I immediately messaged both him and his wife, explaining what had happened. I sent pictures of me on vacation even, timestamped. Apparently, he is a serial cheater and when I exposed our affair, another woman exposed her affair with the husband to the wife because the affair partner was jealous that he had yet another side chick. This was the straw that broke the camel's back, not only because of the multiple affairs, but also because he humiliated her with how public it was, especially it being a neighborhood group. So there's my accidental pro revenge. Wow, Opie, I have to say, I'm a little bit conflicted. I mean, first of all, don't get me wrong, I love that this cheater got exposed and that his marriage ended because that's what cheaters deserve. On the other hand, you were kind of, let's say, lucky that he was a serial cheater to get exposed because if it wasn't, then yeah, that would have been bad. What do you guys think about this whole situation and revenge? Let me know in the comment section. Thanks for sharing, OP. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Now, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I assume that you like these stories that I'm reading out. So here are a couple more that you might enjoy. And if you don't have any time to watch another story right now, save it for later. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.